All right, guys, welcome to this page of the notes, and here's what we've got. I've got some um, stuff. I don't want to call it stuff. I have some properties and postulates, um, most of which you are probably already familiar with from algebra. This top box, these properties of equality, these are all properties of equality from algebra. You should recognize them from algebra one. Um, I've just written them here in your notes so that you have them to reference, um, you know, when doing homework or quizzes or something like that. So we're going to use these to help us write a proof. In addition to that, I have a couple other postulates and or theorems. I have this linear pair theorem, and here's all it says. Um, two angles that form a linear pair. Two angles that form a linear pair simply means that they are two angles that sum to 180 degrees. All right, so if you have two angles that form a, a linear pair, you add them together, they're gonna sum to 180 degrees. Or if you have two angles that sum to 180 degrees, they are a linear pair. You see the converse statement? Yeah, yeah, good practice. Always, always try and practice conditional statements versus converse statements. Postulates about points, lines, and planes. Again, these are postulates. These are things that do not need to be proven. Um, they're really kind of common sense things that we just, common sense says, yeah, that, that's true, right? Uh, for example, through any two points, there is exactly one unique line. In a previous uh, section, we actually talked about that. I had you draw two points. How many different ways can you draw a line through those two points? And we talked about the fact that there's only one unique way to draw a line through any two points, right? That's a postulate, right? That doesn't really need to be proven. It's common sense. Like that's that's the there's only one unique line that goes through two points, right? So all of these are really um, sort of common sense postulates, right? Things that do not need to be proven, but we can use these as justifications for steps in a proof. So here we go. Up first, I want you to use deductive reasoning to solve the equation. We're going to use properties of equality to justify each step. Again, why is it deductive reasoning? Remember, deductive reasoning is based on facts that are known to be true. So as long as I justify each step with something I know to be true, when I get to the conclusion, the conclusion must be true because everything I used, every step I used to get to the conclusion is justified by a true statement. So here we go. I have 14 is equal to 3x minus 4. That is my given. Okay, what am I going to do? I need to solve for x, so I will add 4 to the other side. 14 plus 4 is equal to 3x. That is the um, addition property of equality. Which you'll find on the previous page right up here. There it is. Addition property of equality. You can add the same thing to both sides and um, you're good. Let me finish writing that though. Minus 4 plus 4. Okay, so now my next step, the addition property of equality. Well, now I need to do a substitution. What is 14 plus 4? Well, 14 plus 4 is 18. Equal to 3x because minus 4 plus 4 is 0. Guys, that is substitution. That would be the substitution property. That's why I'm allowed to do that. Keep going. Um, well, the next thing would then be to, right, get the x by itself, divide both sides by 3. So I would have 18 divided by 3. 3x divided by 3. This is the division property of equality. Again, go back to the previous page. Take a look at that chart, properties of equality. You'll find the division property of equality in there. Algebra says as long as you divide the same thing by both sides, you're good. That's perfectly algebraically a legal move. Um, so 18 divided by 3 is 6. So I'm going to do a substitution, right? And there we go. That is my proof. So here's what I know. By deductive reasoning, given this statement, I have proven x is equal to 6. Why? Because every single step 
I'm giving a justification that I know is true. And as long as every step, every fact that I use is true, my conclusion must also be true. Right. Let's try another one. Okay, so I am given Okay, then what? Well, we got to get that x by itself, so let's move the 17 to the other side. I will have 9 minus 17 equals uh, 17 minus 17 minus 4x. That is the uh, subtraction property. Okay. Substitution, um, right? I'm going to do the substitution property, right? Because I know that uh, uh, 9 minus 17 is 8, so negative 8. And I know that 17 minus 17, 0 goes away, so I just have minus 4x. So that's going to be substitution. I probably didn't spell substitution, right? I apologize for that. My next step, um, to get the x by itself, divide both sides by 4. That is the division property. And since negative 8 divided by a negative 4, the negative signs cancel each other out, and 8 divided by 4 is 2, I get x. That's my proof. Again, I know, given this statement, that x is equal to 2, right, by deductive reasoning. Every step I've given, my justification is true. Therefore, my conclusion must also be true, all right? A little bit more practice, writing conditional statements. All zebras belong to the genius uh, equus, E-Q-U-U-S. I'm not entirely sure how you would pronounce that. Uh, equus, we'll go with that. Um, you want to write a conditional statement. Remember, conditional statement is if... P, then Q, if, P, then Q. So how would you do that? Simple. If it is a zebra, then it belongs to the genus Equus. Okay. Uh, next one. The bill will pass if it gets two-thirds of the vote in the Senate. What a conditional statement. Very, very simple. If a bill gets two-thirds of the vote in the Senate, then the bill will pass, right? Conditional statement, if P, then Q, okay? Um, what we'll do is uh, head on over to the next page of the notes here. I think I've got a couple more proofs for you. I'm pretty sure, yes, awesome. So here we go. We'll just do a couple more to kind of make sure that we really get this, uh, drive this home. Um, actually, this one looks very much like the segment edition postulate. Um, it would appear to, I don't know, let's find out. Uh, yeah, use a postulate or theorem to find the value of x. Okay, well, here we go. Remember from a previous section that we had this segment addition postulate, which simply says this, segment rs plus segment st is equal to the segment rt. Right, the segment addition postulate says if you take the smaller segments, add them together, it will sum to the distance of or the measure of the larger segment. Okay, great. So that is the segment addition postulate. Yeah, segment addition postulate. Okay, great. Well, now we can start doing stuff, right? What is Rs? Well, it's x plus 2. Plus, what is st? 3x minus 8. What is rt? 5x minus 12. Guys, that's a substitution. I am substituting what I know the value of each of those to be. From there, right, we just start moving stuff around using those properties of equality to write the rest of this proof. Let's do it real quick. I'm actually going to do another substitution. 3x plus x. Well, that's 4x. That's a substitution. 
negative 8 and 2 is going to be a minus 6. Again, that's a substitution. I know that negative 8 plus 2 is equal to minus 6. Substitution, 5x minus 12. So actually, the justification for two steps in a row is substitution. Okay, great. Keep going. Um, let's do uh, subtract the 4x to the other side. So I'll have negative 6 is equal to 5x minus 4x minus 12. Okay, that is the um, subtraction property of equality. Subtraction property. Um, then I'm going to do substitution again. Uh, that's going to leave with x minus 12. Um, that's substitution. And then I'm going to add the 12 to the other side. So minus 6 plus 12 is equal to x minus 12 plus 12. That'll be the addition. Right, the addition property says that I can add the same thing to both sides. And then finally, to get our answer, negative 6 plus 12 is simply going to be 6 x, um, and that again, that substitution. Right, I know that negative 6 plus 12 is 6, substitution. All right, so um, again, what we've done here, actually the first step in this proof was to use a postulate, the segment addition postulate. That absolutely will happen. Um, so fantastic. And again, um, really, if, if it's an honors geometry class, more than likely your teacher will have you build that proof from scratch just like we did here. If it's a geometry class, what will probably happen is the majority of the proof will be written and then there'll be pieces missing. Maybe that piece is missing and that piece is missing and maybe that piece is missing, right? You just, everything else is there. The bones are there. You just have to fill in the missing pieces. Mm -hmm. More than likely, that's the distinction that your geometry teacher will make. All right, I got one last one for us here. And yeah, look at this. This is going to be that angle addition postulate. So here we go. Uh, here's what I know from the angle addition postulate. I know that the measure of angle R, S, P, plus the measure of angle P, S, T has to be equal to the me oh, 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 measure of angle R, S, T, R, S, T, right? The two smaller angles have to sum together to get me the larger angle. Now, what do I know? Oh, I, I know a bunch of stuff. I know RSP, so I'll plug that in, substitution. I know PST, substitution. I even know RST, substitution. So this is the angle addition postulate. And we substitute um, x plus 25 plus 5x plus 10 is equal to 15x minus 10, that's substitution. Right, and from there, right, properties of equality to solve this guy for x. All right guys, so um, what we've done is we've taken a look at proofs and why in geometry we're going to work a lot with proofs. Uh, geometry lends itself really well to proofs thanks to this idea of um, definitions and postulates and theorems that we use to help us work out to a solution. Well, those definitions, postulates, and theorems are justifications for why we do what we do. So that's why we write proofs in geometry. It just makes perfect sense to do so. Um, and we looked at two types of proof, both inductive and deductive proofs um, and the differences between the two. And then we looked at um, conditional statements, um, the converse, the inverse, and the contrapositives. Not so much um, really, am I gonna ask you to write those right now, but they're all coming later. And then really the big thing is two column proofs. All right? Two column proofs and being able to write a two column proof Really, all you're doing is what you're used to in algebra, right? Working through a series of steps to get to a conclusion, 
but you need to be able to justify each step. And our justifications are going to be um, undefined terms, definitions, postulates, previously proven theorems, and things like that, all right, to write these two column proofs. Guys, thank you so much for joining me for this set of videos. I had a great time looking at proofs with you. I'll see you next time.